Hello everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Welcome back. And if you are new, thanks so much for checking out my channel. Please hit subscribe and stick around. I know it's been a little while since I've posted my last video. I just wanted to pop on here and say that all is well. <laughs> it's just really busy and I will be out of the country for a couple of weeks. So you may not hear from me until I get back. Um, speaking of the country. Uh, I also wanted to make sure that I at least posted this video because I know that some of you will be uh, looking for recommendations um, for next month and I don't want to put this off uh, too long. So today I am going to be talking about the Reading Across Canada 2023 challenge, um, which has been so much fun. And the goal of this challenge is basically to get people reading uh, more Canadian authors, more Canadian stories. And each month we focus on a different province or territory. And we have a prompt for anyone who wishes to follow the prompts, but you absolutely do not have to do that if you don't want to. Um, you can join in without doing that. Um, if you want more info, I will leave a link to my introduction video in the description box where you can learn all about it. Um, I will also leave links below to uh, the tracker that you can use and I will have the schedule um, and the prompts below as well. So be sure to check all of that out. So during the month of May, uh, we are in Ontario and if you are following the prompts, then the prompt is to read a collection of short stories and I'm going to share the book that I chose to read this month, and then I will give some recommendations and suggestions for next month, uh, for June, when we travel to Quebec, or, or Quebec. Um, if you are traveling by car or bus, Ontario can seem to take forever to get to. So the other provinces that we've already visited, you can pretty much drive through or across in a day. But Ontario is larger than Spain and France put together. It has more than a million square kilometers and has two time zones. Basically what I'm trying to say is it takes time to go from Northern Ontario to Southwestern Ontario because of how large it is. Um, it can take several days. So Ontario comes from the Iroquois word for beautiful water. Uh, which totally makes sense because uh, Ontario has over 250,000 lakes, including all the Great Lakes, and Ontario has the largest population of all of the provinces uh, and territories with over 14 million people. So it is the province where I have lived most of my life at this point. I live there almost 32 years um, in a few different areas, mostly London, Ontario. Um, and then I spent 10 years in the Niagara region. So Ontario is probably most well known for the city of Toronto and the honeymoon capital of the world, Niagara Falls. Um, speaking of waterfalls, <laughs> you might be surprised to know that Hamilton, Ontario is actually the waterfall capital of the world. And Ottawa is another significant city since it is the capital of Canada and uh, you know where the parliament buildings and all of that is. I love their jazz fest. Um, if you are a hockey fan, you might have heard of Wayne Gretzky, who was born in Brantford, Ontario. And then of course, there are many, many other famous uh, Canadians from Ontario, like um, Ryan Gosling, Jim Carrey, uh, Rachel McAdams, uh, Dan Aykroyd, if you can go back that far back, um, Mike Myers, Alanis Morissette, Shania Twain, everyone knows Shania, uh, Neil Young, Drake, and of course Margaret Atwood, um, Kiefer Sutherland, Keanu Reeves, Justin Bieber, Shawn Mendes, and again if you go back enough, John Candy, um, and Alex Trebek, who came from Sudbury, uh, where the big nickel is. Uh, so there's a lot that can be said um, about the province of Ontario. And as mentioned, there are like many great Canadians uh, from this province. Um, I've already mentioned Margaret Atwood. Um, but there are like many great Canadian writers born or living in Ontario. So this month shouldn't be very difficult to 
find something that you know will work for anyone. So for this month, I am hoping to read Canary by Nancy Jo Cullen. Um, I'm choosing this because not only is it a short story collection, which fits the prompt, um, but also it has been on my shelf for a while now. Um, and I picked it up because Nancy Jo Cullen lives in Ontario, uh, like I once did, and we are both from the same hometown in BC. And I know Nancy Jo Cullen's family, so I thought that this would be, you know, just a neat way to connect two of the provinces that I have lived in and that the author has lived in as well. So please let me know in the comments below uh, what book you are planning or hoping to read, or maybe you were already reading it for, uh, for Ontario. So for those of you looking for recommendations and suggestions for June, I have 10 authors that I'm going to talk about. So hopefully there, you know, there will be some of these that will be interesting to you or inspire you in your search. Um, the prompt for June is a book by a French Canadian. So first up is Marie Renee Lavoie, uh, who was born near Quebec City. And this book is a potential book for me in June because I still haven't read it. Um, and it is Autopsy of a Boring Wife. And it's translated from the French by Ariel Aronson. Uh, this is the first book of a trilogy, I believe. Um, this has been likened to a French or Quebecois uh, Bridget Jones's diary. And it's about a woman uh, named Diane whose husband leaves her because she's boring and it's how she takes her life back and attempts to live a non-boring life. Uh, this has been long listed for Canada Reads so that is how it originally made its way to my radar and hopefully I will get to this soon if not in June. So speaking of Canada Reads, this next book won Canada Reads in 2003, and it is Next Episode by uh, Hubert Aquin, translated from the French by Sheila Fishman. Uh, Hubert Aquin was born in Montreal, and this book was first published in 1965. And it's about a man who is in prison in Montreal, on the psych ward of the prison, and while he's awaiting his trial, he writes a spy story. So this idea really appeals to me and it's a quick read too. It's, I don't even think it's 150 pages, yeah, it's like 136 pages. Okay, we may as well stick with um, Canada Reads for a bit here. So another Canada Reads contender uh, is Suzanne by Anne Barbeau Lavalette. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Um, and it's translated from the French by Rhonda Mullins. So this was shortlisted in 2019 and it has been on my shelf this whole time. Um, and I believe that this is a fictionalized account of the author's grandmother who was an artist and had basically abandoned her family. So that has me intrigued. The next author was also born in Montreal. Uh, Jean-Christophe Réal's novel Tatooine was long listed for Canada Reads probably about three or four years ago and it's translated from the French by Catherine Hastings and Peter McCambridge. Uh, this book, what I remember the most is that it was odd. It, it had a very quirky main character uh, who was trying to cope with an illness by dreaming that he lived on another planet called Tatooine. So if you are into something a little more, I would say, quirky and different, uh, this might work for you. Next up is one of Canada's most famous authors from Montreal, and that is Mordecai Rickler. I have two books of his on my shelf. One is The Apprenticeship of Duddy Kravitz, which has you know been on my shelf uh, since I was in high school. And the other is Barney's Version, which you may have heard of uh, because it has also been a f made into a film. Uh, Rickler was known for writing about Jewish working class people in Montreal, and I believe that um, Duddy Kravitz is a coming of age story, and Barney's version is about a man who, um, I will just say sounds like one of those characters that you love to hate, um, and why and how he writes his own memoirs. 
So these are just the two that I have, but Rickler has written uh, many books, so he's definitely worth checking out if you're looking for um, a Canadian author uh, for Canadian classics and Jewish life in Montreal. Another famous Canadian that you've probably heard about, uh, may not think of him as an author, but that is Leonard Cohen, who was also born in Montreal, and I have several of his books. I have a couple of his poetry books, um, and I've dabbled in them a bit, but have never uh, read any of them like from cover to cover. So this potentially, you know, could be a good opportunity to do that. So I have um, Book of Longing, and I have The Flame. I have two of his novels, uh, Beautiful Losers, and The Favorite Game. So this might be a chance to finally read some Leonard Cohen. The next authors on my list are all authors who were born outside uh, the province of Quebec uh, or even outside of Canada, uh, but they have called or do call Quebec uh, their home at, in some way. So I will start with another famous Canadian author that I think would be considered a major figure in French Canadian literature and that is Gabrielle Roy. She was born in Manitoba but lived most of her life in Quebec and I believe the book that she is most well known for is called The Tin Flute. This is a Canadian classic and I've only heard good things about this book and I really really want to read it but I don't own it yet so it may be waiting a little while longer for me. Um, the story is about a family in the slums of Montreal um, and this was Gabrielle Roy's debut novel. So again this is you know totally on my radar uh, but I don't know when I will have the chance to finally get to it. Next up is Kai Kello who is from Western Canada but lives in Montreal and I've had his book Nob Dominoes at the Crossroads on my shelf for a while and I do need to get to it. Um, it's also a quick read, like why don't I just read it? Um, this is a collection of short stories about Caribbean Canadians and it has been long listed for both Canada Reads and for the Giller Prize. Um, and I haven't read anything by him before, but I've watched him in interviews, so I am interested in really uh, getting to this finally. These next two authors were born outside Canada, so if you want to read a book by, you know, someone who lives in Quebec now, um, then these might still be some options for you. Uh, first up is Anne-Marie MacDonald, who I, I know I've talked about her about a million times because she is one of my all-time favorites. Uh, she was born in Germany and she splits her time between Ontario and Quebec. Um, I've talked about Fall on Your Knees, one of my favorites, and The Way the Crow Flies, another favorite. Um, I also still have Adult Onset by her and Fane, which is her most recent published book, and it's high on my radar that I hope to get to uh, this year. The final book I'm going to share is a book that was shortlisted for Canada Reads uh, this year, and I've talked about it before, and that is Hotline by Dimitri Nizralla, who was born in Lebanon but now lives in Montreal. And I really enjoyed this story, which is about a Lebanese woman and her son who um, immigrates to, they immigrate to Montreal and it's about the barriers that they have to face and how they deal with living in a new country and with a new culture. Um, so this is one that I recommend, you know, if you are interested in immigration stories, um, yeah, let me know what you think if you pick it up. So these are 10 authors to consider for Quebec in June. Uh, but this is like, definitely not an exhaustive list, and if you can read French, then that would even open up your options uh, so much more. I unfortunately cannot read French. Uh, so please let me know what you are planning on reading uh, for June, 
Do you have a favorite French Canadian author that you would recommend or suggest to others who are looking for someone? So if I have a chance to do more videos while I'm away, I will post what I can, but I'm not making any, any promises. Um, I may just not post until I'm back at the end of the month. Um, I do have a few videos waiting to be filmed. Uh, for my favorite books of the year so far. Um, so those might have a chance of getting out. Um, hopefully I will see you again soon. Until then, I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and don't forget to make every day an adventure. Mm -hmm.